This is Amy Anderson, the habitat biologist for the Lander region of the Wyoming Game and Fish Department. And I'm going to update you today on some of the habitat conditions and ongoing habitat projects in the Lander region. Some of the priorities for the Lander region include, first, the Whiskey Mountain Bighorn Sheep Herd. It's an iconic herd for the state of Wyoming and especially for the Dubois community. This herd has been declining for several decades and is a high priority for habitat improvement work and also for herd management. Secondly, the Lander region has three priority mule deer herds, the South Wind River Herd near Lander and the Sweetwater Herd near Jeffrey City are our two mule deer initiative herds in this region and Dubois mule deer is a priority migration initiative herd. Invasive species are especially important in the Lander region and focusing mainly on cheatgrass. We have recently developed a Fremont County cheatgrass strategy in coordination with our awesome weed and pest partners. And we're continuing to bolster our How to Think Like a Beaver program by building beaver dam analogs live trapping and relocating beaver to headwater streams, and educating the lander community on how to live with beavers in close proximity to urban environments. I wanted to talk for just a moment about the Whiskey Bighorn Sheep Herd and the Whiskey Mountain Bighorn Sheep Management Plan that we are currently implementing and some of the habitat work that we're doing to follow that plan. This population has been declining since the 90s from a population of over 2,000 sheep to under 500 sheep that we have today. We're doing everything we can to work with the habitats to try and provide forage and movement corridors for this beleaguered sheep herd. Some of the habitat improvement work that we have ongoing on the Whiskey Basin WHMA include a planned prescribed burn on Tory Rim in coordination with our forest, Shoshone National Forest partners. This prescribed burn uh, has been in the works for many years to try and get approval to burn within the wilderness area. So now that those approvals are finally in place, we hope to implement that prescribed burn in the either the spring or the fall of 2023. This will depend on appropriate burn windows, but it may impact fall hunting uh, if we end up doing the burn in the fall. Also, we've been treating cheatgrass actively on Tory Rim. In 2021, we aerially applied Rejuver herbicide to the Tory Slope, and we saw little control due to reduced precip precipitation after the herbicide was put down. Uh, we need precipitation to incorporate that herbicide into the soil and we just didn't get it in the summer of 2021. That herbicide is still there and we're hoping with the moisture that we received in 2022 that we'll have be better results when we go to monitor that cheatgrass treatment this coming summer. We have work ongoing on the Trail Lake Meadow to renovate uh, an old stand of smooth Broman Basin wild rye to include more beneficial species. And it will be reseeded uh, in the spring of 2023 and irrigated through the summer of 2023 to make sure that seed takes hold. This winter, we worked with the Wind River Indian Reservation and the Bureau of Indian Affairs uh, to remove willow cover that was thick and very dense up against the Little Red Creek Bridge. We're hoping that by removing some of that cover that it will open up enough of a movement corridor for the sheep to be able to pass under the bridge and water from Little Red Creek itself or from the river without ever having to cross on the highway. Also, we've initiated fundraising to try and initiate a project on whiskey to remove encroached conifer from the Torrey Valley, from some of the old movement corridors 
um, that sheep used to migrate between winter ranges and summer ranges. And that project we hope to initiate in 2024. This slide shows some of the progression of conifer encroachment on Windy Ridge and within the Whiskey Basin WHMA. The top left photo is from 1909, and the top right photo is what that same area looks like today. You can see a total change in density of conifers. And some of the locals remember in the past when there have been uh, wildfires in this area that there were responses by the sheep herd um, with improving numbers. So we're hoping that if we can do some conifer removal from known historic movement corridors that we can benefit the sheep herd greatly. The bottom two photos show conifer cover in 1990 which was around 2 to 10 percent conifer cover to what that conifer cover looks like today with upwards of 20% conifer cover in a lot of the same areas. This is why we hope to initiate a project to at least punch some holes in the conifer cover for the benefit of the whiskey bighorn sheep. Now I'd like to talk for just a moment about the South Wind River Mule Deer Herd Unit and some of the work we have ongoing in this area to improve habitat for mule deer. First of all, the South Pass Aspen project is in its eighth year of implementation, mostly removing encroached conifer from aspen stands to try to stimulate sprouting of young aspen and also to improve understory herbaceous forage for lactating does and fawns in the early summer during their transition between winter range and summer range. This project has treated 3,100 acres on Forest Service, BLM, state lands, and private lands in the South Pass area. We've also, in, in uh, coordination with the Forest Service, installed beaver dam analogs on Mill Creek. Um, this is part of a, a project that we hope to increase the connectivity of the riparian area um, soak up some water into that riparian area to stimulate suckering of aspen and willows for the benefit of mule deer, moose, and other wildlife in the South Pass area. We recently replaced about four miles of boundary fence between Forest Service and BLM in order to keep trespass cattle out of this project area to allow the habitat to respond. <clears throat> We've also treated cheatgrass in a number of places in uh, Mule Deer Crucial Winter Range, including Sinks Canyon, which was treated in 2022, and Red Canyon that was treated in 2019. Both of these cheatgrass treatments have responded well in the past, and we have an ongoing 10-year plan to try and keep on top of the treatments to hopefully reduce drastically the amount of cheatgrass on these two winter range areas. We continue to do rapid habitat assessments in the South Wind River, and we also track the weather data associated with this mule deer herd. We have an ongoing Russian olive removal project in coordination with Weed and Pest, uh, the Popoja Conservation District, and the Popoja Weed Management Area. The Wyoming Game and Fish Department uses PRISM. It's a weather data set that was developed by Oregon State University that uses multiple weather stations located throughout the herd unit to show fine scale weather variations across the herd unit. In the graph here, you can see that the water year precipitation from October to, to September is the blue bar. The red bar is growing season precipitation, which is April to June. And then the yellow bar shows spring, summer, fall range precipitation, which is the higher elevation precipitation that falls from May to July. You can see that we had 
higher than the 30-year average for precipitation in 2022. This might seem unusual because we had a very light snow year from 21 to 22, followed by a very dry summer. Most of our growing season pre precipitation fell in May, and that was followed by almost no measurable precipitation in June, less than average precipitation in July and August, and only average precipitation in September. Of particular note was the lack of precipitation received during the months of June and July when forbs and grasses need moisture for continued growth. The winter from 22 to 23, as most of you know, was very harsh in the Lander area with heavy snowfall and very cold temperatures. The average temperature from November through February was six degrees colder than the 30 year average. And January snowfall was the highest ever recorded for the Lander area. The above average snowfall combined with the low average temperatures for Lander and the surrounding foothills created nearly continuous snow conditions for most of the winter. This likely means wildlife have had to work harder to access forage to maintain body condition compared to winters without continuous snow cover. However, the snowpack may benefit vegetation production in the coming growing season, but that will depend on spring precipitation. Rapid habitat assessments are a monitoring protocol developed by the Wyoming Game and Fish Department to monitor large habitat areas within mule deer initiative herds. The rapid habitat assessments track things like age classes of vegetation, browsing and grazing pressure by wild and domestic ungulates, conifer encroachment into rangeland or habitat or riparian areas, diversity and density of forage, presence or absence of invasive species, the disturbance his history such as habitat treatments, wildfires, or even prescribed fires, the overall site function and management options available to improve habitat. For the South Wind River herd in 2022, 12 habitat assessments were conducted, 85 acres of aspen, 123 acres of rangeland and 73 acres of riparian. Aspen communities across the herd unit where treatments or wildfires have not set back succession. Aspen stands exhibit mid to late cereal stages with moderate age class diversity. Some areas show high levels of browse on young aspen spin stems that contributes to lower recruitment of aspen. Browse within these stands is likely a combination of both livestock and wildlife. Species diversity for aspen communities is good across most of the herd unit and is generally lowest in stands with higher levels of conifer encroachment, which cause drying of the sites. Higher than normal summer temperatures likely contribute to livestock and wildlife sheltering longer in the cover of aspen stands, which may increase browse on aspen suckers. The shrub and rangeland communities assessed in 2022 were three habitat assessments, and two of those showed late cereal shrub class classification, which indicates more dec decadent shrubs and decre decreased age class diversity. This is often consistent with lack of disturbance, such as fire. The riparian areas that were assessed in 2022 were generally in good condition. Assessments occurred in the Dillabaw Buttes area, along the Loop Road, and on the southern tip of the Wind River Mountains. A, a high level of species diversity was found in most of the assessed riparian areas, including many shrub and forb species beneficial to mule deer does during lactation. There were some areas of increased erosion found where two track roads crossed riparian areas or where heavily used livestock cr crossings occur. Some areas showed severe herbaceous use, like, likely by livestock, but the willow communities 
associated with the streams were generally in good condition with recruitment occurring and browse levels generally low. Relic beaver activity is present along most of the stream corridors and it would be good to see beavers return to these systems. The Lander region is working to restore beaver to headwater streams and some of the RHA areas may be good areas for beaver relocation. The Sweetwater Mule Deer Herd is another mule deer initiative herd for the state of Wyoming. It's located in the area of Jeffrey City and Green Mountain along the Sweetwater River. This is also a focal herd for the state of Wyoming where a coloring effort, effort is occurring to track mule deer um, to get more data on the status of the herd. Some of the habitat work that's going on in the vicinity of the Sweetwater Mule Deer Herd is the Green Mountain Aspen and Riparian Enhancement Project. This project works with Bureau of Land Management, Wyoming State Forestry, and private landowners to remove encroached conifer from aspen, riparian areas, and mixed mountain shrub communities to try and improve habitat for mule deer in those areas. We've identified areas along Willow Creek and along West Cottonwood Creek and the main stem of Cottonwood Creek where conifer will be removed using a contracted saw crew in order to stimulate a suckering response from Aspen and also to reduce the drying effects of conifer in riparian areas. There's also a very good beaver community on Willow Creek on the east side of Green Mountain that we would like to proliferate through a fencing project to try and, and improve the native woody vegetation for the benefit of beavers. An ongoing project on West Cottonwood Creek is beaver dam analog installation that was done five years ago and monitoring efforts have shown a very good response of the riparian vegetation to increased connectivity of the stream with the riparian area. A brand new project in the Sweetwater Mule Deer Herd Unit is to protect several high producing springs in the area of Beaver Rim and Sage Hen Creek. There will likely be some fencing installed to protect critical areas of riparian habitat in those two areas. And like the South Wind River Herd, we track PRISM weather data and collect rapid habitat assessment data for this herd unit. The PRISM weather data for the Sweetwater herd unit again shows that the water year precipitation from October through September was higher than the 30 year average while growing season precipitation and spring summer high elevation range precipitation was slightly below the 30 year average. Winter snows usually contribute the majority of the annual precipitation in this area, but the winter of 2021 through 2022 was, very, was a very light snow year. In 2022, the majority of the precipitation fell in May and over five and a half inches of rain fell in August in the Sweetwater area. Temperatures through the summer were well, well above average. And the snowfall for the 22 to 23 winter has been above average and temperatures below average, as well as the high winds that persist across this herd unit. In 2022, 12 rapid habitat assessments were conducted in aspen, riparian, and rangeland habitats across the Sweetwater herd unit. These, as is consistent across the herd unit, showed late cereal vegetation communities with high browse levels on shrubs and aspen. Most of the RHAs showed relatively high species diversity, and invasive species appear to be less of a problem in the Sweetwater herd unit when compared to the rest of the Lander region. Of the 2022 RHAs, two were in Aspen for 85 acres, 
60 acres of riparian habitat were assessed and 907 acres of rangeland and shrub habitats were assessed. Aspen communities in the Sweetwater Mule Deer Herd Unit are typically in very late cereal condition, exhibiting high levels of drying due to conifer encroachment. This results in decreased sprouting of young, young aspen suckers, and those that do sprout are at increased risk of browse by livestock, feral horses, and wildlife, mostly elk. Severe browse levels on aspen suckers is drastically reducing the number of trees surviving to grow above six feet tall. Species diversity of understory herbace herbaceous forage plants is also lower than in what would be a healthy aspen stand. The Green Mountain Aspen and Riparian Enhancement Project is working to address these concern concerns by conducting large-scale conifer removal. Rangeland and shrub habitats across the Sweetwater herd unit are generally in good condition with good species diversity and low levels of cheatgrass and other invasive species. In 2022, the RHAs conducted in shrub communities showed relatively low grass and forb production, which would be expected in a low precipitation year. These were also conducted later in the season which may contribute to lower species diversity due to senescence of forbs by that time of the year. The best production of any shrub assessments was a, within the Hadsill prescribed burn, which BLM conducted in 2021 and again in 2022 on the south side of Green Mountain. These burns produced a good response from herbaceous forage that stayed green longer into the year than surrounding landscapes. Riparian areas assessed in 2022 were in relatively good condition. On the east end of Green Mountain, especially the Willow Creek drainage, many of the streams are being recolonized by beaver and appear to be holding water later into the year and showing greater willow and herbaceous vigor. Encroached conifer removal from private lands along Willow Creek combined with the presence of beaver should improve the habitat conditions for mule deer. Next is the Dubois Mule Deer Herd Unit. This is a priority herd unit for the Migration Initiative in the state of Wyoming. There are several ongoing habitat projects and some new ones as well for the Dubois area. Work is ongoing in the Long Creek area and has expanded across the Dunor Valley to the Bench Creek area where aspen stands are encroached by conifer and the U.S. Forest Service, Wyoming State Forestry, and Game and Fish are working on both public and private lands to remove encroached conifer and try to improve sprouting of aspen and increase underscore, understory diversity for migrating mule deer. The Whiskey Basin Conifer Removal Project, while it will help bighorn sheep we hope that it will also improve mixed, mixed mountain shrub habitats for mule deer, especially in the Torrey Valley and the riparian areas associated with Whiskey Basin. That project is in the beginning stages of being funded, and we hope to initiate work on that project in 2024. The East Fork Cheatgrass Project is ongoing. Uh, started treating cheatgrass on Duncan Bench in 2018, a retreatment occurred in 2021, and another treatment um, between the Wiggins Fork and Bear Creek along the East Fork Road occurred in 2022. The Weed and Pest District has been working with us to also treat all of the roads associated with WHMAs uh, for cheatgrass and there is an ongoing project with the U.S. Forest Service, Weed and Pest, and the Game and Fish to treat oxeye daisy, which is a high priority invasive species for removal in the Wiggins Fork drainage. And then there's ongoing production utilization monitoring for um, Bighorn Sheep Winter Range on the Whiskey WHMA and for the Wiggins Fork Elk Fur 
felt heard on the East Fork. The Wyoming Game and Fish continues to monitor production and utilization of winter ranges on the Whiskey Basin WHMA for big, wintering bighorn sheep. The production on whiskey was up a little bit from last year, although still much lower than in previous years, while the utilization is well below the 60% threshold of allowable utilization on whiskey. This is likely due to a much lower population of sheep than in the past. And you can see that the production of forage, which is the green line on the bottom graph, is fairly closely correlated to the precipitation levels, which is the blue line. You can see in 2014 that there was a jump in forage production. This was a high precipitation year, but also a fertilizer treatment was applied in 2014 that showed lasting effects to the forage production over the next several years. The Lander region is actively working to control invasive species across the region. And a big part of the success of that program is due to the excellent partnerships that we have with Fremont County Weed and Pest and our other federal land management partners. Some of the projects that we're actively working on in the area include the Tory Room Cheatgrass Project, the East Fork and Duncan Bench Cheatgrass Control Project, the Dubois WHMA Road Project, which the Weed and Pest conduct annually to control cheatgrass and other invasive species along roadways to keep the invasive species from spreading uphill into the very high priority winter range sites. We're working with the Shoshone National Forest to control oxeye daisy in the Wiggins Fork. The Sink Canyon Cheatgrass Project is a coordinated effort between Wyoming State Parks, BLM, Fremont County Weed and Pest, and the Game and Fish. We also have treated cheatgrass on the Red Canyon Slope, which is a very high value elk winter range and also mule deer winter range. We're working with the Poposia Weed Management Association to control Russian olives on private land in partnership with a whole series of private landowners on Squaw Creek and Baldwin Creek, just adjacent to Lander, in order to try and improve woody, native woody vegetation along those stream systems and reduce the presence of invasive species. And we also partner with the Fremont County Weed and Pest and the BLM on their project to control cheatgrass and leafy spurge in the area of government draw for the benefit mostly of sage grouse, but also pronghorn and mule deer. Due to a high number of nuisance beaver calls that the Lander region received each year, I've been actively working with the Lander Region Aquatic Habitat Biologist to initiate a learning to live with beaver campaign in the area of Lander itself. We've been going to schools and outreach events and community organizations to do education and outreach with beaver best management practices and talking to folks about ways they can live with beaver on their properties rather than trying to remove them. Some of those things include wrapping trees to keep beaver from chewing off uh, cottonwood and willow and aspen trees in there along their properties, and also to install things like beaver deceivers to protect culverts and pond levelers to uh, reduce the chance of flooding. We even had a training on Green Mountain on how to install a pond leveling device. And we hope to work with the Poposia Conservation District and other agencies in the region to promote these structures to try and um, educate people on living with beavers in the streams. 
because if the habitat is good enough for beavers now, removing them will likely not solve the problem as they will probably move right back in. The Lander region has also been working to try to learn to think like a beaver by building things called beaver dam analog structures. These structures basically mimic beaver dams in streams that have active erosion or are in need of stabilization in some way. We've installed BDAs on Mill Creek on South Pass, and we intend to install some BDAs on Gold Creek as well, which is the adjacent drainage to Mill Creek. Five years ago, we installed some BDAs on West Cottonwood Creek, as seen in the photos at the bottom of this slide. And then we worked in partnership with BLM on Deep Creek to install BDAs this past year. In the photo monitoring at the bottom of the slide, you can see that the, the year the BDA was installed in 2017, there was active erosion. The stream was wide and shallow. There was cheatgrass on the banks. <clears throat> and these were things we were hoping to stabilize by installing the BDAs. As luck would have it, in 2019, we had a high water year and the BDAs silted in very well. And we completely reduced the erosion on the, the head cut adjacent to the stream. And by 2020 and 2021, the cheatgrass was no longer visible in that system. And the silted areas had vegetated in creating a much more stable stream than was there prior to the BDA installation. One of the other things that we're working with um, with Shoshone National Forest is a beaver relocation program. This is something that we do as kind of a last resort if landowners are not able to live with the beavers if they're damming up ditches or head gates. Um, we can go in and actively live trap the beavers and move them into streams where they're more needed. We likely do not have the capacity to do this in every nuisance beaver situation, but when everything else has failed, we partnered with Water for Wildlife Foundation and Shoshone National Forest to purchase a beaver holding cage and also beaver panniers for um, transporting beaver on horseback into headwater streams. And you can see in the pictures below the, the holding cage and also the release of a beaver this past summer on West Willow Creek. We're actively working to identify headwater streams that would support beaver populations. And this would be beneficial in maintaining stream flow later into the year. And that's about all that I have for you today. Um, here are some pictures of habitat work that was conducted in 2022, including uh, riparian work that was conducted on Green Mountain, BDAs that were installed on South Pass, rapid habitat assessments in the area of Pass Creek. In the center is a photo of uh, Bench Creek Aspen improvements. The two bottom photos are on South Pass where conifers were cut out of aspen stands. And I encourage you, if you have any questions or comments about the ongoing habitat work in the Lander region, please feel free to contact the Lander Regional Office.